Hi guys, how's it going? Um, I just want to say uh, you might not have seen me as much lately because I've been playing around with a game called Warhammer Underworlds Online. Um, and I just wanted to sort of share my, my first thoughts and impressions on that game. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. I've not logged a, a ton of hours, um, but I've sort of played enough to, I think, have an initial first impressions opinion and uh, maybe just give enough information for some players who are kind of on the fence uh, to think about whether or not this game might be the, the right game for them or not. So with that said, let's get into it. So first of all, what is Warhammer Underworlds Online? Um, it's basically a tabletop uh, board game that's been adapted into um, sort of a virtual setting and is now available on the Steam uh, web store. It was released officially on the 21st of April, 2020. So it's a fairly new product. It's only been out for a little more than a week, maybe two weeks now. Um, and so with that said, I mean, the early access phase is basically over. And so as tends to be the case with newer games, there's certain bugs which are ironed out over the course of, of, of release. Uh, before it used to be that when a, a product was released, the expectation was that the product is perfect. Now it seems that uh, developers are more willing to release games that maybe are a little rough around the edges and they kind of lean on the community to sort of guide them on where they want the final product to net out. And I think that's sort of the case with Warhammer Underworlds Online. Even though the early access is officially done, I think there's still some aspects of the game where things are still being ironed out. But with that said, I mean, uh, where, where did Warhammer Underworlds uh, come from? Well, I, it, it goes back to Games Workshop, obviously the granddaddy of, of these types of games, um, of, of tabletop games. They've got um, basically a series of box games. Uh, they've got Beast Grave, they've got Night Haunt, um, they've done Shade Spire. And with each, each release of these box games, they package with them a series of, um, you know, uh, new war bands, new objective cards, new ploys, and things like that. And I'll get into what that means later. But basically, what the developers of Warhammer Underlines, uh, Warhammer Underworlds Online are, are are planning to do, I think, is to sort of release a base game with a certain number of of predefined um, like uh, war bands that are part of the uh, Shade Spire box set. And then after that, likely as DLC content, they're going to add in additional war bands as the demand um, makes sense to do so. So, um, I, I just want to say, like, uh, I, I I am a big fan of it. I have my own little I have my own little painted up war band here, uh, like for for the box game. I haven't played a ton of games with the box game. Like I said, I don't have a a huge d uh, database of experience to go from but just to give you a little context like i'm not coming from someone who's never played the game before uh on, on tabletop so i do have sort of a baseline now I, because i don't have tons of experience on tabletop i was hoping that the warhammer underworlds would kind of get me up and running on my on my feet because it's been a while since i played it um and there's like there is a a learning curve to this game i'm not gonna lie it does require that you learn a certain amount of rules um, and th the way that this game has been developed is to be really close to what the actual um, tabletop game like the way it functions they didn't take a, a ton of creative liberties let's say in in, in interpretation with warhammer total war 2 that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes developers invented their own characters. They adapted things to their own system in terms of the mechanics. This game is, is really kind of what you see is what you get. Um, so with that said, they did, they did, they do offer a tutorial. Um, I don't know. I don't remember exactly how to get to it. Now. But when you do first join the game, you can join a, you can do a tutorial. And the tutorial sort of walks you through the basics of the rules. It does not walk you through. Um, it does not walk you through everything. So there is certain like the tutorial would be very long. Already they broke the tutorial up into three parts, um, and some of it you're just gonna honestly have to figure out on your own by just playing and losing. It's just part of the deal. 
I don't. I, I think they were trying to strike the balance between a really in-depth tutorial versus not a tutorial versus versus like, um, I don't know, keeping it short and let let players just kind of figure stuff out. So there were things that I did learn on the fly. There were some games that I was playing where I was like, I don't understand why I lost, and because it was never explained to me. And then, uh, for example you need to score a certain number of objective tokens to win the game, right? There's three three called, uh, three called activation phases per game, and then at the end of the activation phases, whoever has the most uh, vic like uh, objective tokens uh, or victory tokens basically wins the game. Uh, but if you have the same number of objective tokens, you, then it's not automatically a tie. Then there's other things that go into it, like, for example, who is standing on the objectives at the end of the last round that determines sort of a tie break situation i didn't know that um and i didn't realize that until i had ended up in a tie and, and lost so it's just like little things like that maybe i mean maybe it isn't a tutorial correct me if I'm, I'm wrong could have missed it but little things like that i think can kind of fly under the radar if you're um if you're not fully aware of it now they do offer uh, to their credit a handy gl a glossary up here in the top so you can look over like certain key terms if you do get a little bit lost but i'll be honest with you like if you're playing a game you're probably not going to have time to like look up the rules or look up the glossary terms or whatever you kind of really do have to need to know this before you go into a game and um now, now, how does the game actually work in terms of in terms of like uh, mechanics and um, sort of how does it play? Well, basically, you are in charge of, of a warband. So let, let, let's let's get to that right now. Uh, here's the tutorials down here. I was looking for that. If you go to yeah, this is what I was talking about. So there's basics, cards, and glory. Got it. Mash. Anyways, um, so you're in charge of a warband. So here on this left hand side, you can see what the different warbands are. So there's uh, this is these are the default war bands. I haven't they haven't released any DLC yet or anything like that. So this is literally what you get when you purchase the base game. So you've got uh, uh, Steelheart starter, the Steelheart champions. So these three uh, Stormcast Eternals. You can use the um, corn themed uh, Megori's fiends. They got this kind of cool warhound in the back, which I like. There's the uh, Iron Skulls boys, which is my favorite. These are, the, these are the ones I painted up. Yeah, Iron Skulls. Um, probably not not a great shot. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You don't care. Uh, then there's the uh, Sepulchral Stalkers, which is like kind of an undead faction, which is, is sort of good at at tanking and objective capping. There's the Far Striders, who have a little bit of range damage with their with their bows. And then you've got uh, you've got the Skaven, uh, which is really stands out for their uh, high movement speed and again objective capping so so Polkos, so basically uh, stormcast obviously they're very elite uh, they can do damage they tend to try and play in terms of play style they try and wait till late game um uh, worries and iron Skull boys tend to be pretty aggressive and trying to go in and just kill stuff fast sepulchral so stalkers they tend to be able to take a hit really well and sort of cap um, and then just obviously come back to life. Uh, these guys, again, they want to probably wait till late right, late game and, and snipe stuff. These guys are more for objective capping, but they can fight a little bit too if they're buffed sort of late game. But mostly they use really good movement speed to kind of get around the board and snatch up objectives. All right, so on to, um, on to the, the actual like deck, deck building aspect. So what does that mean? So... With each warband, you can go in and customize your fighters. So I have uh, unlocked two different skins for these guys. You don't unfortunately get to like actually customize the paint scheme exactly as you'd wish. You only get to choose between some preset paint schemes, um, but it's, it's better than nothing. I, I, as you level up and get more experience, they use those like predefined paint schemes as sort of rewards and incentives that you can unlock. You can also get different portraits and things like that. And then you can also upgrade your deck. So in the game, there's three sort of cards that you can... Well, there's four cards. There's your base fighter cards. So your fighter cards tell you how far your character can move. They tell you that they can go on guard mode if they need to. They tell you what their attack is. 
So you have a range, you have, uh, which tells you how many hexes that their attack can go. You have dice, which is how many dice you're throwing when you roll. And then you have your damage, which is what the damage output is. I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty because this is just a first impressions video. But suffice to say, these are all your stats. This is how far they can move, their, um, their defensive number of defensive dice that they can roll. And this is their wounds counter, um, which is like, uh, you know, how many hits they can take. Um, then your cards, so so here's the, I have four, four of these guys. And then for each of the warbands, when a certain condition happens, then they can get um, just an inherent upgrade or an inherent bonus. So for the, for the Iron Skulls boys, which is the green skins, if they take damage, you see it says Inspire, then you get to flip over the card and they get based, basically buffed up stats. So they'll, they'll just be more effective in combat. So sometimes it's good to take a hit before you attack if you're playing this warband. All right, in terms of the objectives, you've got um, you've got like a whole host of different objectives. So down here, you can see what the um, coins are or whatever. This tells you like the number of victory points you'll get if you achieve that, uh, that coin, or sorry, that, uh, that condition. Um, so you can pick and choose amongst the cards. There are some cards that are specific to your war band and there's other ones which are generic and that any war band can use. Uh, and when you select your cards, they'll go up over here on this in this objective um, list. Then uh, you have your ploys, which are like sneaky sort of things that you can do to um, basically throw your opponent off and help you to achieve the objectives. I think these are, I mean, obviously objectives are very important, but these are arguably the second most uh, important cards in the game. These are all your sort of utility sort of, items that can surprise your opponent and um, allow you to, um, you know, achieve victory. And then there's upgrade cards, which you can get by basically achieving an objective or killing an opposing fighter. Uh, and if you do those, you get a, a victory point and you can spend your victory point to upgrade your character. So you give them more health or damage or special attacks or regeneration or movement or whatever it is, just more utility for your for your characters. And then if there's a cosmetic screen, you can just change your portrait, whatever, it's not a big deal. You can also get new titles by, um, by basically getting experience and, and just playing the game. The rank play is a little bit awkward. Uh, it shows you like how many victories you get or whatever it is, but it doesn't show you from what I can tell like, in a traditional ladder, like how high or how low you are in, in terms of the victories. Um, and I guess it is separate for each of the factions. So, so far I've got really cool Iron Skulls boys. Uh, I've got them up to level uh, seven, I guess. And then you like with each with each progression you get more unlocked so that's their basic system um now maybe we'll just hop into a game against a uh, uh no nah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna play a full rank game here i might save that for another day uh but let, let's maybe we'll, we'll do like uh let's try a game against the bar just to show i can so i can show you the interface a little bit so at the beginning, there's usually a dice roll, and then that determines who goes first or not. So because of that dice roll, I'm choosing first. So you get to choose from a certain number of boards. These, um, like, these sort of skull icons indicate where you can place your fighters on the board. Um, so let's just say I choose them really well. My opponent will choose, and then they get to decide how they want to position the board. So again, that's random. So in this case, I didn't choose, but if the dice throw had been different, then maybe I would have. Then I have to place my fighters. Uh, sorry, I have to, we have to place the objective tiles. So uh, the rules for the objective tiles is you have to place them at least two hexes away from the nearest adjacent hex. So let's say I place one here. You can see that all of those red areas would be blocked off. I would not be able to place another hex there. So, but if I place it here, then, then I can. So let's say I, I put it here, confirm. Now they're gonna place their objective tile. I'll put mine here, 
confirm they're going to put their next objective tile so I can put one more here. Confirm. There we go. So this is what the board looks like. You've got, uh, you've got basically, so these are the objective markers here. This is objective three, this is objective two, this is objective four, this is objective five, and this is objective one. You can also toggle on a grid to just make the hexes a little bit more clear. I tend to like it. It just makes the board a little bit easier to see. Um, on the bottom, you've got your, uh, you've got your basically uh, power cards, your utility cards. And then on the other side, you've got your, um, your objective cards. So this is telling you what I would need to do. Either hold, uh, score objective one, uh, hold three or more objectives, or if none of my fighters are out of action at the end of the game, then I would score points for that. Uh, if you don't like your hand, you have the option to just say, this is a trap, I don't want to use that. You throw it away, it puts them in your discard pile, and then you can get a new hand. And then you, can it. you can do the same here for this, for this hand. Uh, well, let's say I pass. Okay, we got the cards. He gets to start. Or I got to start. We choose. So I guess I won the roll off. So I choose who, who goes, from, who places the fighter first. So let's. Uh, I place it first. I can draw my characters. pause for a second here and just talk about um, sort of the interface. So here on the top corners, you can see the, the, the warband fighters. So this is just saying who, who they have. Um, the leader is indicated by a, a crown. So your leader usually has better stats or if you're playing undead, like he's the one who brings people back to life. Like he's usually important. Um, in, in terms of uh, the hexes, most characters can move about three to four three to five hexes, it depends. Uh, it's two if you're undead. Um, in terms of the randomization of the objectives, one thing I found is that it tends to usually favor one side because there's only five objectives. Um, you, you drop them, um, but that means that three of them will pretty much always end up in one person's side and then the other two will end up in the other person's side. So there's always someone with, I think, a slight advantage starting the game. It's the person who has the three objectives from what I can tell. Um, but there are other things that kind of mitigate that. And most of the games I've found have, have ended up being kind of close anyways. But I do think whoever gets the uh, three objectives in their zone uh, tends to start off with a bit of an advantage, I think. But again, I'm not, I'm not a vet. Um, in, in terms of uh, play style, I think there's certain cards that are clearly stronger than others. I mean, it does seem to me a little bit like someone took a tabletop game with traditional dice rolling and they mixed it with uh, a card game like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon and uh, tried to sort of merge them into one package. And, it, and it's, it's good. Um, for people who really like to think analytically and like to read through things and um, you know really take their time to come up with complex strategic plans um, it's a little bit like chess with a bit of uh, rng to it um, but if you're not that type of person if you uh don't uh if you don't like analyzing a lot of things, you just want to get into the action right away, uh, it might not be for you. On the other hand, what I have found is that if you do do rank play, um, there is a turn timer, so you have to do a certain action within a certain period of time. I found that turn, turn timer to be very quick, so the game tends to be very quick, um, and because of that, you... If, especially if you're a new player, you might find that a little bit overwhelming at first. Uh, you will make mistakes. Um, there's a possibility your opponent's going to make mistakes as well, so you have to factor that in. It's like if you play chess, you know how you hit the timer at the end. This game's a little bit like that. Again, you're not seeing it because it's with bots, but...
but against real players, it does tend to be a pretty fast moving game. Um, there have been some debates within the Steam community about making the turn timers, turn timers faster or shorter. People who played a lot of games, they like shorter turn timers. People who haven't, they want longer turn timers. So who knows where that'll net out. The game has, like I said, just been released two weeks ago, so a lot can change. Um, but I think that's it. I don't want this video to draw out for too long. Um, there, I do think there are some factions and some cards which play better than others, and you won't really get a good handle on that unless you just try it out or unless you just um, you know, read some guides of your own. Part of the fun of, the, of games like this is trying to figure out what's optimal. You might find solutions that nobody else has found. Uh, at the end of the day, if you're a fan of Warhammer, uh, do I think you will like this game? Yes. Is this game without, without bugs or without polish? Uh, it, it, it does have bugs. It, it, it does need some additional polish. The user interface could be better in some areas. But overall, is it playable? Is it good fun? For me, yes. I tend to be very analytical, and I tend to be a very you know, heavy Warhammer fanboy. Uh, my recommendation is, if you are a really hardcore you know, Warhammer fanboy, you've played tabletop, you've played the board game maybe, um, you're going to like this game. It, it does have a lot of elements that you're going to like. If you're not, if you're like more of a casual sort of Warhammer fan, uh, I say maybe hold off or hold off until it's on sale. There's a good chance, uh, like if you do buy the game, because it, again, it's only been out for two weeks, there haven't been any big discounts yet. Not many of your friends have the game at this point, so you might not be able to just like hop in and just play with them. And there's there's other competing products out there too. Not for this particularly, but like, I mean, there's Tabletop Simulator, there's other sorts of things that can give you like a board game type of feel. And I do think that sort of puts the pressure on um, developers of games like this to really offer additional value outside of what you get from a, a traditional uh, type of board game. So we'll see what sorts of things they can add you know, further. I mean, they've got the emotes and the raw when they land onto the board, but is that, I mean, I don't know, is that really gonna change the gameplay? I don't know. Um, the, uh, the, the game I do expect will evolve a lot as additional uh, expansions and, and other things get added to it, like spell casting and things like that can add a lot of flavor to the game that's not currently in it because they're just sort of on the first iteration of the game. Uh, but with time, it'll come. Anyways, that's my those are my initial thoughts. I might uh, play a couple ranked matches later if this kind of thing interests you. Um, so take care and we'll see you around. Bye.